Hey everyone, welcome back to the VMP Performance YouTube channel. I'm JD, our social media guy here, and uh, today I want to cover spark plugs with you. So, in today's conversation, I, I want to preface this with being absolutely clear that this is for stock bottom end stuff, right? So, 11 and up Coyote cars, uh, 0304 Cobra, and 07 to 14 GT500 that are on stock compression, stock bottom end. As you vary, you know, your bottom end, you have different compression rate uh, ratios, you want to be sure that you have the applicable plug. In that instance, we recommend that you speak directly with your tuner, the people that are building the car. We have two primary recommendations that we make here, both for NGK plugs. If you're in an 03 to 04 Cobra or 07 to 14 GT500, we typically recommend the NGK 3690. Uh, it's an Iridium plug, great plug. For 11 and up Coyote cars and trucks, you know, F-150s, so on and so forth, we recommend the, uh, the 6510. Uh, this is, again, another Iridium plug. These are long life plugs uh, and at the proper heat range for what we recommend on boosted applications. For these plugs, depending on your boost level, that's how we'll make a recommendation for your gap. Anything that's 14 pounds or below, we're gonna recommend that you start at 30 thousandths or .030. For 14 to 19 pounds, as you start to pull it down, you'll close that gap up. That recommendation typically is somewhere around 28 thousandths or .080. Uh, and finally, when your max effort, your 19 pounds or above, uh, that recommendation starts at 26 thousandths or .026. So when gapping these plugs, uh, there's a there's a specific set of tools we'd like for you to see or we'd like to see you have. First and foremost, I'm going to show you the little coin from the auto parts store that hangs at the register. Yeah, ditch that. Um, reason being is that over time, you know, first of all, it's a little bit inaccurate. You're trusting that you get it to the right spot in rotation, uh, and second of all, it does wear. Uh, so we'd recommend actually grabbing something like a good set of feeler gauges uh, so that you can accurately measure um, and you don't have any kind of gradient or uh, variation that you're trying to trust that you kind of landed in the right spot. A, an accurate set of feeler gauges uh, will, will take, all that take all the question marks out of setting up your spark plug. So definitely grab a set of feeler gauges and also you want an appropriate tool uh, that has an end uh, sort of like this that assists with opening and closing the gap on the plug. Um, you don't want to be beating on it with a, with a hammer or tapping it on a table. That works, don't get me wrong. Uh, garage mechanics and, and, and professionals alike have done that for years, but if this is your first time, we'd recommend getting the proper equipment to, um, you know, proper tools to uh, work on closing and opening up the gap of the electrode on the spark plug. So what does that look like in process? Um, these plugs are going to come gapped larger than what we recommend to uh, out of the box. They're, they're typically set up for naturally aspirated settings that's higher, 0 .040 and higher. Uh, so you're going to need to close them up a little bit. You'll take your feeler gauge, get it to the appropriate, we're going to start at 30 just because that would be our entry level recommendation for a, a set of plugs. Uh, so that's at 030 uh, and you're going to slide it in there and check. This plug I've already pre-gapped. So you'll see that the feeler gauge sits in there. There's no wiggle to it. It's relatively tight. It's not crushing the feeler gauge. It fits in there with ease, but uh, it, you know, it slips in, it slips out, but doesn't wiggle. That's, that's an indication of having that gap appropriately closed down to the size. If you need to open it up, you'll take this open end of your tool, or uh, whatever tool that you have, and you'll pull back on the electrode to open it up, and that should have opened it up to like 35 or so. Um, to close it up, you'll just do the opposite motion. You'll put it on the electrode itself and pull towards, you know, pull against the bend there to close it up a little bit. And you always want to double check. We recommend sitting down with your tools, getting out all your plugs, going ahead and getting them set, and then putting them back in their box with a sleeve on there to protect your gap so that you don't bump them or, or, or mess it up there. Because any variation of gap can create weird behaviors with the vehicle. Outside of that, um, last but not least, is, is talking a little bit about lifespan of plugs. On, uh, on an Iridium spark plug, typically that lifespan is 100,000 miles. Um, being that this, these are upgraded applications, you're driving the car harder, you're going to be taking it to the track, that shortens that lifespan up. Our recommendations are once a year, put a set of plugs in the car, right? That's a good kind of roundabout rule. Um, but also doing a little bit of research on how to look at and understand the condition of your spark plugs. 
we could even say that at oil changes, maybe pull a plug, have a look at it, inspect the porcelain, make sure there's no cracks there, make sure there's no corrosion up on the, uh, on the uh, boot end of your plug. And then, and then looking at the part that's in the combustion chamber, you're going to want to inspect for uh, oil residue. That would be indications of engine wear, uh, ring wear. Uh, but you want to review the color of the porcelain on the inside. You want to look for physical wear or burning on the, the electrode itself. Things like that could be indications of the plugs being worn out and being uh, ready to change. And again, this is going to vary with your usage of the vehicle. If it's just a street driven vehicle, you'll find that you'll get long service life out of your spark plugs. Now, if this is a car that you're racing every weekend um, using Boostane, um, or, or aggressive fuels or ED5 and it's really turned up, that lifespan is obviously going to get shorter. Uh, and these are things that you can submit logs to your tuner and review. All that being said, we thank you for checking out the video. We hope this answers your questions. If you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at Sales and Support via sales at vmpperformance.com or give us a call at the shop. We're always happy to help. Thank you for checking out the video and we'll see you again soon.